Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I need a new trailer. You guys have seen my other one. I've had to weld it like three times. It's painted funky. Uh, it bends up and down like that. It's not in great shape. The brakes don't work that well. And I thought to myself, you know, for this new trailer, Rover Monitor, you might as well go big or go home. So we're gonna go big. So I'm headed up to the auction today to go take a look at what I'm looking at. And if I like it, I'll head back tomorrow and I'll buy it. But what it is, is a 50 foot car trailer that can fit three pickup trucks or four regular cars on it. So a bit of a difference from my rusty one car trailer. And the kicker of it is that it comes with a big rig truck. For those of you wondering, you don't have a CDL Rover monitor, you are correct. That would be the next venture on the channel. If I get this truck and trailer, I would go get my CDL so that I could actually use it. So yes, very cool and big things coming to the channel, but let's go head up to the auction first to see if I'm actually gonna buy this thing. So I'm gonna cut to myself there right now. All right, here it is. Oh yeah. And there's a man in a boat. Woo! Yeah! This is an 04 Volvo VNM. And the reserve is currently 7,000 on it. And that includes the tractor and the trailer. So this is a big old car trailer. So this trailer is a 2002 Kaufman car hauler, which, you know, with a little bit of rattle can restoration could look very nice, but I want to look everything over very well. Make sure we're getting a decent deal on it. Eric's going inside grabbing the keys. I'm going to take a closer look at everything. So the deck of the trailer looks decent. Just needs the rattle can. Tires don't look great and there's some flat spots where he either skidded or something or other. So that is a not so good. Probably going to need tires eventually and these are not cheap. So this is the, the single wide or whatever they call it. It's got a little tread, but probably also needs replacing in the nearest future. So not so good. Obviously I'm out of my leak here. So I'm just inspecting this like I would a car. So <laughs> no leak from the output shaft. Airbags look in good shape. Oil pan is a little wet, but there's no active dripping. That is definitely a little wet though. Now we're gonna do the old engine start. Eric's got the jumper here. I don't know if it'll be enough, but we'll see. Battery box is under this step. What she got? Not enough. <laughs> Carl's got the second battery pack. Try number two. Two jump packs. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like it's building up air pressure, which is good. It does say check brake ECU at next stop. Uh, I will have to look up what that means. So I just looked that up and it's just it has to do with the ABS, which is why the ABS light is on. So it could be the, either be the ABS module or the sensors or a fuse somewhere. We'll check it out. So the trailer lights are working. That's good. And the pressures are built up. Run lights are on. Rust wise, there's some on the bottom of the door here. That can be easily taken care of. Um, and that's, it's a Massachusetts truck. Yes, there is some rust on the frame, but I think that it's very solid, especially because it was inspected recently. Here is the engine. Let's check the blow by, which there's really none visible. It's a good thing. Okay, so this is looking decent. Fuel filter still looks like fuel underneath it just to make sure there's no serious leaks again and like 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 before all the hoses look fairly new there's a little bit of surface rust on things but really decent to me i'm back in the cab because it's starting to rain out there i really am out of my league here i've driven these before but i don't know exactly what to look for i'm just treating it like a regular old car i've looked at some of these before and the windshield was cracked i like that the wipers work the radio works and I just did a test to make sure the clutch worked, which it did. This is a 10 speed, so down here and in there is first. All right, so we're gonna put the parking brake back on and shut her off. I'll give you a brief thought process before I head back for today. I could sell this trailer for seven grand all day. It's got nice tires. This trailer actually does have really decent tires on it. Um, lights all work, just needs a little bit of, you know, spray paint. Psh because this is all surface stuff. This is very surfacey. Even this thin metal here, nothing's through. Tires are absolutely meaty. Not even close to the tread wear. 
back one's a little less but still that's my thought process is if like i all of a sudden say oh crap never mind i made a mistake then i can make my money back and hopefully actually make a little money because i'll still have the tractor to sell but my real hope is that i go to this cdl course which is now required by law you can't just have a sponsor you need to go to the cdl course so i'll do that and my hope is i pass that and then I could just use this thing. Carl's waving at you guys, trying to distract me. But yeah, that's the plan. So we'll be back here bright and early tomorrow and uh, cross your fingers that nobody bids against us. It's auction day now, the day that we bid. So we're gonna head up there and see if I can make this thing happen. Oh man, this hasn't happened to me in a while. I got stuck behind a school bus. So we might be a little behind schedule now. All right, bus is out of the way. Take a look at this three wheeler here. That's pretty cool. All right, we're back. So I did some more research on this last night. It's got a D12 engine in it, Volvo D12, which is a decent motor from what I've read, but a million one miles is a lot for them. So hopefully it's had an in-frame rebuild or something, a rebuild of some sorts. Um, but my other research showed that I couldn't find a Volvo D12, even with this mileage for anywhere close to $7,000. And that doesn't include the trailer. The cheapest one I found was 9,700 9, and it had a million three and this has a million one. So that makes me happy. Makes me excited. I'm excited to bid. Uh, All right, here we go. Here. We a long time to wait. And on the Volvo, and we'll get 10,000 in the trailer. The Volvo in the trailer, truck and trailer, ready to roll. 5,000. 5,000 to go. 5,000. We're 2,025. 2 bid. 25. 2,025. 2 bid. 25. 2,025. 2 bid. 25. 2,025. 25. 2,025. 2,025. 2,025. 2,025. You know what the magic number is? Six thousand six five six bit six five six bit six five six. So today six bit six one six thousand six six one. Sold it six thousand. Better number. What's your number? Thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. And $1,500, we got it So as you guys saw, I got it for just $6,000 reserve at $7,000, so I'm very happy. Actually, the original reserve was $10,000, and they just kept coming down and down and down, which kept tempting me. And I got to meet with the previous owner of the truck who gave me a bunch of pages of receipts, which I will show you guys. But he gave me like nine pages of receipts that added up to like $10,000, so that's pretty sweet. He did say that it needs new front tires and he priced them out at, uh, I think uh, it was either 500 to pop or 500 total. I'm gonna guess 500 to pop. So add an extra thousand on there because it does need new front tires. He says it shakes at 35 because of the tires, but once you get past 35 mile an hour, it's all good. So the truck has no battery at all. So we're gonna try jumping it with the double jump packs again, just like yesterday. Little plugs. Oh, come on, baby. Wow. Woo! While we let the air pressure build here, Carl's gonna show me where to uh, turn around. Nice whip, Carl. <laughs> Get rid of beans. Oh my God. Hold on tight. There she is out in the sun. So I'm driving this home under the personal use law. You can drive a semi truck home unloaded, not across state lines for personal use without a CDL. So I'm unloaded, I'm not going across state lines and I'm using this for personal use and it is legal. So yes, I am driving at home. All right, first real driving test. Parking brake off. Seems to shift all right.
Obviously, I'm not the world's best at shifting, but hey, <laughs> I got her moving. All right, 10th gear on the interstate. Now I see the shakiness. Now it's definitely a little shaky at 60-ish miles an hour. So one of the comments I read while researching this truck is that the D12 engine that it has is pretty underpowered. Um, of course, I'm unloaded right now, so as far as I can tell, it seems to have like unlimited amounts of torque for me. Uh, obviously, I am unloaded, but you know, in 10th gear, I go up these steep Vermont hills, no problem. Uh, the seat is uncomfortable, I will not lie, the seat sucks. Noise level is good, uh, drives nice other than a little shake from the tires. Holy mackerel, good thing the wipers work on this thing. It just went from beautiful and sunny to a typhoon or monsoon or something with heavy rain. I found the fuel economy data, so I just reset it. We're going to see what we get on this whole trip for fuel uh, for mileage. It also says I have 83 gallons of diesel left, which to me sounds like a lot, but apparently that's only a quarter tank's worth. Alright, so here's my exit for getting off here. Uh, I'll give you one more show of my accelerating so you can write me tips in the comments on how to shift better and uh, how to skip gears better. Because right now I kind of just run through gears one by one rather than like skipping a few gears, which you can usually do while you're empty. Uh, just because I'm not super comfortable with it yet. Alright, I'm going to start in second actually. Here we go. Well, we got it to where we're parking it. I keep getting that intermittent battery light flashing, so I'm gonna shut her off and just uh, see if it if that's actually a problem with the battery. Let's see. Well, it started back up again, so the alternator's definitely working. Shut her back off again. Cool thing for those of you who don't know, this is the control for the seat. And then this this one here is for the lumbar. These seats are not comfortable, by the way. This is the gas mileage that I got for the whole trip is 9.8. Um, I don't think this gauge is very accurate because it still says I have 82 gallons. Um, and it's gone from like, it literally has gone from like 68 to 83 gallons the whole trip. So I don't know if the fuel gauge is that accurate. Well, here it is in its storage spot. And this is probably where it will sit for the next couple of months because I can't really drive it again legally until I actually get my CDL. I haven't been this excited over a purchase in a long time, like years. Uh, this is crazy cool. For $6,000, you get a rig that works and you know looks good. It's just pretty crazy, it's pretty cool. As far as I could tell, it drove great, other than the little bit of shakiness from the steer tires. But like, clutch felt good, engine had plenty of power, um, brakes were great. So any of you truck drivers out there or heavy diesel mechanics, you can let me know what I should look for next on this thing to get it ready for when I get my CDL. Some things I'm already thinking about doing to it is obviously the front tires replacing. Then also I might put duals on the rear instead of super singles for traction, because obviously in Vermont, uh, we get a lot of slippery roads in the winter and those will get no traction. Definitely got to fix that door. I don't want that looking like that. I want this to look professional. That's going to be it from me, guys, for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribed. Stay subscribed and you'll see what I end up doing, I guess. Thanks for watching.